here today for Lawn Fawn and for today's project I'll be creating a one layer card. I'll be using the Hey There stamp set and this is the only stamp set I'm going to use on the card today. And then I'm also going to need some mask paper so I'm using some Inka Dinka Do stuff but um, you could use like a sticky note or like a full back sticky note, post-it tape, whatever you like. I'm just using masking paper because I want these masks to last a little longer in case I want to recreate this card or do a similar looking card with the same stamp set and I need masks. But um, whatever floats your boat, whatever you like to do, um, this is just what I decided, but whatever works for you guys. So I'm going to start off by stamping out my panel. So I didn't have any super thick cardstock for my Copic colouring. So I knew that if I created just a card base that the ink would bleed through to the inside of the card. And I didn't really want that. So I decided to stamp my uh, scene onto a panel first and then adhere that panel onto a card base. So I guess it's sort of cheating. I guess it's sort of not a one layer card. But I just didn't have the right cardstock, um, otherwise this would have worked fine. So I'm going to start off by stamping out my background. And the main thing that you want with a one layer card is to figure out what images you want in the foreground and what images you want in the background. So I'm starting off with this small uh, sort of barn scene at the top of my panel here. And I knew that I wanted my barn to be in the front and then the fences to be sort of coming out of the back and going around the um, border here. So I stamped the barn first, stamped the barn on a piece of masking paper, cut the mask out and adhered it over the barn image. And then I was free to stamp my fence layers as well. And so then in the end, when I peel all the masks off, you'll see that those fences are actually stamped behind the barn, but there's no weird lines overlapping or anything like that. So um, it all works out really nice. It looks super clean. And if you don't cut out your mask perfectly also, don't worry about that. You can always fix it up with a black Copic multi-liner if there's any mistakes. I have a lot of mistakes at the end of this and I just fixed it up with a black marker just to save a little bit of time of cutting out these masks absolutely perfectly. A black pen really, really helps. So I'm just going to finish off stamping my entire scene. I finished off the barn at the top. Then I stamped some cows and some chickens at the bottom. Then on the second layer here, I'm stamping a horse and the pig. And then I also stamped the sheep at the top there, which I sort of made a little bit of a mistake on the sheep. I should have stamped him more over to the right hand side, but I was originally going to stamp a goat there. So, um, that's why it was so over to the left, but it didn't really fit, so I left it. I think it looks okay. I think it is in a little bit of an odd placement, but it's fine. I think it looks fine in the end. So once I have done all of my stamping, I can work on ink blending the background. So because I'm only using one layer of cardstock, I really want um, there to be a defined sort of line between each of the hills that I am distress ink blending because I can't use foam tape or anything like that on this card since it's all one layer. So I sort of need to create the visual effect of dimension in another way. So I miss making sure that I'm going really heavy handed on where those um, masks are. So like the top of the hills. So I'm making sure that I'm using a lighter color and a darker color of Distress Ink. So I'm using Twisted Citron and also Mode Lawn, two of my favorite green colors of all time. And I am just going Twisted Citron on sort of like the bottom part of the mask and or the bottom part of the panel and then mode lawn on the top part of the panel where the mask uh, sort of ends so then when I peel back the layers here you can sort of see that there's going to be a really nice defined line um, instead of them just appearing that they're all just standing on one flat layer of grass it looks like there's multiple hills that they're standing on so hopefully that makes sense but um yeah I, I just think this looks a lot better in the end rather than just like doing it all one color um it just it sort of worked out a lot nicer so now I'm just finishing ink blending this little second panel here and then I did a third and then I'm going to finish my fourth ink blending and I'm just repeating the same thing except this time I don't really have to be too sort of precise with it because a lot of the green um, is going to be ending sort of behind those 
fences so you're not really going to see the defined line and also the top layer is just going to be blue for the sky so again you don't really need to be too um, precise I guess for that layer because you're not really going to see the defined lines anyway and it's still going to look like there is a sky and land meeting so um, it all works out fine in the end. So for my blue sections I'm going to use just a little bit of tumbled glass since it's a really light blue color and then I'm going to be finishing off with a little bit of salty ocean at the very top of the panel and like I said before this one doesn't really matter too too much because you're going to see that they're different areas because I used obviously different colors as well. So I'm just going to finish off ink blending at the top and then once I finish ink blending here I can remove all the masks which is my absolute favorite part because you can see that if all your hard work paid off and all your stamping was correct. So now that I have finished ink blending the sky, it is time to remove all the masks. So I just grabbed a spare piece of cardstock. This is actually the cardstock that came out of uh, the stamp pocket. And I'm just going to make sure that I keep all of these masks with the stamp set in that pocket so I can reuse them for another project if I would want to in the future. So now it's time to remove all the masks and as I said before, this is the best part. Um, it is just so rewarding and it just looks so nice to see those perfectly stamped images in that scene. It just looks really super fun and um, I really love this part. So now that all of the masks are removed, I can start colouring in my images with Copic markers. I always like to do my background first because... I feel like that takes a lot less time than Copic colouring does. So if I make a mistake um, while I'm doing the ink blending, then I can just restamp the whole panel and I wouldn't have wasted half an hour on the colouring. So I always like to do all of my blending first. So I just went ahead and used some red colours for the barn since I believe barns are typically red. And then I'm using some dark W markers for the cow's spots, the details on the barn and also the, I think, hooves of the animals. So the pig and the sheep and the cow. And I'm just using W7, W5 and W2 for all of that blending. Then once I finish off the roof, I'm going to just color in the sheep and also the rest of the cow. And I'm just using some really light grays for that. W0, W00 and 0 just to add a little bit of shading on those animals just to make them appear more white. Then for the pig, I'm using R85, R83 and R81. Then for the noses of the cow and the pig, I'm just using some really light R's. Then I'm using my favorite skin tone for the horns on the cow and also the sheep's face, ears and legs. Then I'm using some E50s for the horse. So I went darker on his mane and sort of face details and then I went lighter on the rest of his body. So I'm using E59, E57 and E55 for his mane and things and then E55, E53 and E50 for the rest of his body and face. Then for the fences, I'm using E44, E43 and E42 to... Um, color all of those in and also you'll see maybe on the fence there that they don't join up correctly but I just went in with a black marker and fixed those up since um, I obviously didn't line them up correctly when I stamped them. So then once the um, fences are done I'm using some yellows to color in the chickens and the hay in the barn. So I'm using Y35, Y15 and Y11. Then I'm just using YR18 and YR14 for the noses and the feet of those little chickens as well. So that finished up all of my coloring and you can see that it totally brought the scene to life. And then I just need to figure out a sentiment. So I did really want this whole panel to be... Um, like one layer so I didn't want to add like a dimensional sentiment over top so I decided to just use the hey there sentiment and stamp it in the bottom left hand corner since I felt like that sentiment just fit the space that I had left best so that finished up my card for today that I hope you enjoyed seeing my one layer card I think they're a really fun style of card to make and I think the results are worth it too so thank you so much for stopping by today I hope you enjoyed. All of the supplies will be listed over at the blog and I will catch you all next time.